A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about the secret connection between the number pa and the dividori that I have introduced in the previous video and actually one or two people down there in the comments actually noticed that well there's a connection between those two very nice things. One is the random thing being the dividori that I have introduced in mathematics gone wrong done right and the other one being pi a very well known thing for mathematicians. And this video is going to be interesting for two reasons namely uh, on the one hand pi and on the other hand it's going to mark the start of a new uh, format here on this channel. First we are going to go through some mathematics, some, some interesting random whatsoever mathematics. After that I'm going to tell you a few things about how we can implement something like this into Python and at the end we're actually going to program something with Python. We are going to implement an algorithm. Now if you're going to enjoy this new format if you do please leave some feedback down there in the comments and now we're going to dive right in. For those who don't remember what the Dividori is you can find the link down there in the description by the way. This right here has been the Dividori. We have this abomination of a notation. It's just going to be um, repeated division in, instead of um, multiplication on the factorial basically. And what we got out was by my means, so I said this right here is the one and only true definition for the dividori. It's going to be n double factorial over n minus one double factorial. And for those of you who can't remember what the double factorial was, if we have for example six dividorial, it's going to be well six double factorial over and this is going to be 6 minus 1, natural number is going to be 5 if you trust Peona axioms obviously, so 5 double factorial and the double factorial basically is just um, regular factorial with a gap of 1 in, in between each and every iteration. So we got 6, 5 is being left out, then we get 4, then we get 2 divided by okay 5, then we get 3, 4 is left out times 1 and this is how it's been defined. That's the double factorial and our dividori is just a quotient of this thing. Okay, how could something like this be possibly connected to the number pi? Well, for this I would like to take a look at a product, a very famous product. It's Valle's infinite product for the number pi over 2 basically. So it's going to be defined by a very nice mathematical snake. We have derived it before, linked to the number theory playlist, yada yada yada, that's there. It's going to be down there in the description. So it was nothing but 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, da da da, da. you can see the pattern, everything over. And in the limit, those partial products are going to give you power over 2. Okay, this is cool, right? I mean, this right here is Valle's product, but could we put this into more nice notation, maybe product notation such that we can make this a bit more abstract? Okay, this looks quite um, heuristic, I would say. So yeah, there was an infinite product notation for this being derived through um, the infinite product of the sine function. Namely, this was our product where k ranges from one to infinity. It's an infinity krill of two times k squared over two k minus one times 2k plus 1. And here, yeah, this is it. Now, you can maybe already see how this could possibly be connected to the double factorial and our dividori at last. Namely, we have 6 times 4 times 2, for example, up here. What we have here is 2 times 4 times 6 times 8, blah, blah, blah. But the whole thing squared. Down here, we have 3 times 5 times 7, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 1 times 3 times 5, but the whole thing squared. So one could um, basically postulate that our dividorial in the limit for even ends up here is going to give you, well, just pi over 2, but it's a little bit more delicate than that, just because we have this 2k plus 1 factor here in the denominator. So we need to play around the time a little bit more with the expressions like you would play around with your girlfriend at home or your wafu. And see if we can kind of manipulate this into the dividori even though we have this odd one factor of 2k plus 1 out here. So let us write everything out in terms of a partial product meaning we're not going to go to infinity yet we are going to say this product goes up until n. Now we are going to write everything out. So what we have up here in the numerator is nothing but 2 times n I'm going to start with the highest index 2 times n and then 2 times n minus 2 and so on. So 2 times n times 2 times n minus 2, blah 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 up until 4 times 2. And all of this is obviously squared, we can drag the square to the outside. 
okay? And all of this divided by, okay, let us go ahead and plug n into here. So two times n minus one. Next one is going to give us two times n minus three. Okay, just like with the double factorial, skipping one step in between, which is two times n minus two. So we're going to get two times n minus three, dot, 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 up until three times one. This is what we have here, times, and now two n plus one, and then 2n minus 1 is going to, next, going to be the next iteration. Dot, 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 up until 3, basically. But it's a partial product and it really wouldn't hurt to multiply all of this by the multiplicative identity 1. Because if you have only 1 times this bunch of apples here, you only have this bunch of apples. Okay, And this right here is going to open the doors to what we need. What we have is that this factor, this big factor and this big factor are the same, okay? If we were to multiply those two together, we are going to get just this factor squared, leaving us overall with, okay, numerator is going to stay how it is. So we're going to get two times n, times two times n, minus two, dot, 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 up until four times two, whole thing squared, divided by, okay, n, like I mentioned, this is going to be two times n minus one, dot, 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 up until three times one, and the whole thing squared, that's what we got. And the odd one out, two n plus one, is going to just stay here. And we came pretty far with this. This is good because you might notice that this right here is just two times n double factorial. And down here we have two times n minus one double factorial yet again. It's the same situation that we are having up here. If we were to decompose our six into the form two times n, then this up here is nothing but two times three dividorial basically, okay? And we can decompose this into two times three, times two times two, okay, I'm, I'm just playing around with the odd and even decomposition that we are having here, times two times one, divided by, and how can we express five with respect to our, and let's imagine that our three is now our n, because we have something of the form two times n, then five is nothing but two times three minus one, this is just the odd decomposition of this number. So two times three minus one, and three is nothing but two times two minus one, okay, we have a running index that we are going to reduce by one each and every time. Three becomes two, two times two minus one, and one is nothing but two times one minus one, and two becomes one, basically. And this is just the same situation that we're having here, meaning this part that we are having here, okay, without the squared, is going to be our two n dividorial. And if we square this thing, we are going to get two times n dividorial, but the whole thing squared, divided by, and what's left is the 2n plus 1. Hey, this is pretty good, right? I mean, <laughs> we have rewritten this really nicely into dividorial form. And now we can take the limit as n approaches infinity, obviously, hello kitty caddies, meaning the limit as n approaches infinity of our partial products is going to be, well, we had this before, this is going to be pi over 2, and this is nothing but the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n dividorial, but the whole thing squared. Um, let's put the parentheses here, this is a bit better, okay? As for the notation, because that would imply that this is just 2 times n dividorial. Now nah, good, this is not something that we want. Divided by, okay, let's, let's make this kind of nice. Divided by 2n plus 1. <laughs> and this is what we got. This right here is the secret connection between the number pair over 2. <laughs> and our dividorial. I think this is kind of neat. And now we just need to talk about how we can implement something like this into a Python algorithm. This is the second part of this um, video now. So at first you might notice that, well, this right here, if we just want to approximate pi over 2 using Python, uh, we don't need the limit. And all that we need is, well, basically a function that spits out the dividorial in some way, divided by a constant term, 2n plus 1. So this is a function that we need. But this function is basically easy to implement because it's just a quotient of a function and a constant. What is this function that we need for our value approximation? Well, our function is obviously our dividorial. And the dividorial is a function that we can implement using a quotient of double factorials. And this is the only hard part, I would say. So we need double factorials. And for our dividorial to work, we need it for the odd and even cases 
to be covered. Meaning all that we need is we need to implement ourselves a function that spits us the double factorial out in each and every case and then we can just define two other functions using a quotient of functions that we have already defined before. So let us take a look at our double factorial for the odd and even cases and how we can actually implement this into a product notation. This is all that we need and then we can let everything run over, over a running index and basically a, a recurrent solution in Python and then we are done. So if we take a look at six double factorial. Okay, like mentioned before, this has been nothing but two times three, times two times two, times two times one. And now we just need to take a look at how we can decompose our six into something that has to do with running index. Well, we just need to find what our running index upper bound basically is. It runs from one and then two up until three. How is three connected to six? Where well, six is nothing but two times three, meaning three that we are having here is nothing but um, six divided by two. Meaning translating this into some random arbitrary n that we are having here, we are going to get that our product runs from one up until, well, n over two. I hope you can see where this came from. And how is the product being defined in there? Well, we are always having a factor of two, obviously. We are going to have even numbers times, well, our running index, one, two, three, up until n. 2 times k. And you can also go a step further and say our 2 is going to be a, a, appear n over 2 times. You can drag it to the outside to end up with 2 to the n over 2 times the product of all the k's. And this right here is our double factorial for all the even ends. How about our double factorial for all the odd ends? Well, let us write everything out. Our 5, we had this before, was nothing but 2 times 3 minus 1 times 2 times 2 minus 1 times 2 times 1 minus 1. So we need to put this into some kind of product yet again. Our running index starts at 1 because we're going to get 1, 2 and 3. Okay? And of which form are all of our factors? Well, they are 2 times the running index minus 1. Okay, let's get this out of the way. 2 times k minus 1. Now we just need to find the upper bound. How is our 3 in our case connected to our 5? Well, Obviously, we have that our 3 is nothing but 5 plus 1 over 2. I mean, you can just solve this right here. 5 is nothing but this, then you can add 1 on both sides and divide by 2, and then you are done. Meaning, if our n were to be 5, then we get n plus 1 over 2. And that's how we are going to implement it into Python. We are going to define ourselves two recursive algorithms, which define our double factorials for each and every case. Then we implement this into a dividorial and also a value approximation, and then we are basically done. As promised, here's the Python part, and as always, I have, well, <laughs> imported the whole math library at first. And like mentioned before, we would like to start implementing ourselves the double factorial at first for the odd and even cases. And after that, we can just simply implement a function for the value approximation and the dividorial. So it's going to be quite easy actually, it's not too hard of a feat. So at first we are going to define ourselves the double factorial, so defect, and it's a single variable function of course. And what we have is we have at first part of a product, so the starting index, so I'm going to call it just df, and we let it start at 1. This is just what we are going to let our product run over at first. If it were 0, then our whole product would be 0, so we let it start at 1 because it's the multiplicative identity. It really doesn't change anything. And now we need to cover two cases. On the one hand, we need an even part of the double factorial and an odd part of the double factorial. So um, if our um, x that we are going to plug in is being divisible by 2 and it gives us 0, so modulo 2 being equal to 0, then this is the first case. And our second case is going to be if we have um, our x modulo 2 not being equal to 0. Okay? This is our second case. Odd and even basically, this is what it does. And now what about our even part? What happened there? So we need our i to be our running index. This was our k in our product. So for i in range. And what's our range exactly? Our range starts at 1, so our running index started at 1. And it went up to, well, basically n over 2. So we need x over 2, but range always goes to n minus 1. So we need a 1 
Uh, so we need to add a 1 to it such that we can get our full range out of it. So this our range it was just a running index being bounded between 1 and our um, n over 2 basically in our product that we had. And what happened exactly? Well our df that we are having up there which is 1 right now is going to be nothing but 2. Okay this was the part times our running index 2 times k. But we need to multiply the other parts of the product to it. So we want our product to stack up one upon another. So times df. This should be the even part. This should work out. And now what about the odd part? So we basically have the same thing right here. We can copy and paste it just with a different upper bound. Namely our upper bound was up until, well, n plus 1 in our case. So x plus 1 over 2 and n plus 1 yet again. So this is our upper bound. And what happened to our double factorial? Well, what we had, we had 2 times our running index minus 1. And just like before, we need to stack our factors up one after another. And this should actually, if we return our df, give us our double factorial in each and every odd and even case. So if we were to get ourselves an integer input, um, no, we don't need this, then we can um, print our defect of our a. Okay, this is what we are going to try out now. Let's say we're going to have four. And this is going to give us 8. 4 times 2 is going to give us 8. What about, for example, um, 15? It's going to give us a bunch of stuff, a lot of stuff. Or what about 7? This should give us 105. And this does work out. So double factorial done. Now, from this point onwards, we can get ourselves a new function, which is going to be our dividorial. Okay, divid. That's our dividorial and it's a single variable function of course yet again. And here's nothing much that we actually need to do. Our dividorial div is just going to be the quotient of our x double factorial over x minus 1 double factorial. Giving us overall and we're going to make it a float type. Okay, this is just something that you can put in here. We, we need decimal places now because it's going to be a ratio. This one right here is going to be our defect of x divided by our defect of um, x minus 1. And obviously we also need to return our div. And now we are going to see if it works out. So div it is going to be what is going to be put out. 12 It's going to us 4.43 etc. And what about 100? It's going to give us 12 dot something. And did you know that in the limit it's going to diverge in a normal case, our dividorial, it's going to be an alternating thing, it's going to be wiggly squiggly boy, and it's going to diverge over time. So you can get yourself a list of all possible dividorials up until 100,000 for example, and you're going to see that it's going to grow all the time. So we got our dividorial and our double factorial, and all that's really left is to get ourselves the value approximation. So we are going to define ourselves WA, it's the value approximation of some variable x yet again. And what was our approximation? Well, our approximation was nothing but, okay, I'm going to call it w for value. There was nothing but our two terms n double uh, dividorial. So what we have is we are going to get our dividorial of two terms and x in our case, x is our variable divided by, and what we have down here is two times x plus one. This is what it was, I think. And now we are going to return our value. So return w, and this is going to give us our value approximation. Oh yeah, I forgot the squared, I'm terribly sorry. 100. It's 1.566 and what does Wolfram Alpha say about this? There's probably an, an annotation somewhere. So pi over 2 should be something like 1.57 something. So if we were to let this run to 10,000, we're going to get 1.50 blah blah blah. What about 100,000? That's going to take quite a while, I think. 1.57079 blah blah blah. That's already a good approximation for pi over 2. And this was the Python part. Um, you can find the Python algorithm down there in the description. And I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Recommend channel if like go over to Flammable Maths 2 and subscribe there too. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Don't forget to leave some feedback down there in the comments what you thought of this episode. Ciao!